Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third day of Environ 2021 conducted by Sahadia College of Advanced Studies in association with the Internal Quality Assurance Cell. Exploring knowledge is like a treasure hunt. Let's begin our third day of the hunt with Dr. A.P. Pradeep Kumar, Professor at the Department of Geology at the University of Kerala as our respected chief guest. Welcome, sir. My name is Aisha Rafiq of the first year geology. And today is not just another day. It's a new opportunity to learn and grow. Let us all begin our day with a silent prayer. Thank you all. I'm sure we all must have felt the spark of blessings by now. To have someone that inspired dreams, encourages creativity and builds confidence by you is a blessing indeed. I would like to invite Dr. Joy K.L., our Honored Vice Principal, to felicitate the event. Very warm good morning to all. Respected resource person, Professor Dr. A.P. Pradeep Kumar, sir, a geology department of University of Kerala. Respected executive director, Reverend Dr. Davis Chengriyadan. Dr. Matthew Paul Uken, the principal. Professor Davis K.J., head of the department of geology. Faculty members, delegates, and dear students. It is always a proud moment to a center of higher learning when an academic endeavor of good standard is performed. I am very glad to be a part of this webinar series, Enron 2021, organized by the Department of Geology of our college. Geologists work to understand the history of our planet. The better they can understand Earth's history, the better they can foresee how events and processes of the past might influence the future. If geologists can prepare map of areas that have flooded in the past, they can prepare map of areas that might be flooded in the future. These maps can be used to guide the development of communities and determine where flood protection is needed. Today we are concerned about climate change. Many geologists are working to learn about the past climate of Earth and how they have changed across time. Geologist, geology can be a very interesting and rewarding career. Leading geologists across the country will be interacting with us on recent issues related to geological sciences at the Enron 2021 webinar series which will be held from 26 to geology and his team members for organizing this international webinar series. I hope you will find this webinar series Enron 2021 is highly fruitful and beneficial for your future work. Today's webinar the third day of Enron 2021 is led by Professor Dr. A.P. Pradeep Kumar, a geologist at the University of Kerala. He passed his MSc degree in geology with the second rank from the University of Kerala and obtained his PhD from the same university. He took his postdoctorate from the University of Stuttgart, Germany. He started his career as scientist in the central ground Water Board, Ministry of Water Resources, India. Then moved to MG University as a reader, Disaster Management Division, School of Environmental Science. Presently, he is working as a professor in the Department of Geology, Kerala University. He had received several scholarships in India and abroad. 
He has also several publications in national and inter international journals with a high impact factor. His area of specialization is metamorphic petrology and uh, or genesis. I hope that his vast experience in this field will be useful to all of us. On behalf of all, cordially invite Professor Dr. Pradeep Kumar AP to deliver today's webinar on cratonic blobs and economic mineralization of India. Please, sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the good words. Thank you for the introduction by the student. Okay, so uh, thanks for the Sagarthaya College for inviting me to give this presentation in the uh, seminar, international seminar series. I welcome this opportunity to address the students of the geology department of the college. And it was nice interacting with uh, your professor Davis. Thanks, professor, for inviting me. So let us directly go into the presentation. I hope now the opening screen is visible to all of you. Yeah, yes, sir. OK. OK, good morning, all of you. Good morning, students. Good morning, Professor Davis. Yeah, good, morning. good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. OK. So today we are going to talk about something which we all know about. Probably you uh, third year students of geology probably know about the divisions of India, the that the India is divided into the Himalayan region, then peninsular India, then the southern Indian part. And also you might have learned about economic mineral deposits of India. Then in your probably in your geotectonics or structural geology, you might have learned about plate tectonics. But what links all these together? That is the question that is uppermost in my mind and in the mind of all exploration geologists. Because as you probably know, plate tectonics is the one phenomenon which links everything in geology together. paradigm. P A R A D I G M. So the plate tectonics paradigm is capable of linking whatever we observe on Earth to the phenomenon of plate tectonics. With a mineral deposit under Yinyal, that mineral deposit has a relation to plate tectonics. If you find a mountain, then definitely it is related to plate tectonics. If there is a mid oceanic ridge, it is related to plate tectonics. If there is a lead sink deposit somewhere in the Rajasthan, it again is related to plate tectonics. If there is a copper deposit at K3, it is related to plate tectonics. So, did plate tectonics begin when Earth formed? No, plate tectonics did not begin immediately when earth formed it began some time later so plate tectonics is something which started on earth after some time of the coalescence of the earth and the formation of the earth and its differentiation into core mantle and crust subsequently you could say that plate tectonics really started forming because as you know a plate is made up of crust and the part above the asthenosphere is a plate or you can call it the upper part of the crust as well as some part of the mandel parts form of the plate so for that the earth should be in layers so the layering of the earth started some time after the formation of the earth so when plate tectonics started then there was, as you know, movement of plates. There was collision of plates. And all these activities led to new and newer and newer landforms getting formed. 
ന്യൂവർ ആൻഡ് ന്യൂവർ ജിയോളജിക്കൽ ഫിനോമിനൻ ഗെറ്റിംഗ് എക്സ്പ്രസ്ഡ് ഓൺ എർത്ത് സോ ഓൾ ദിസ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ലെഡ് ടു ദ ഫോർമേഷൻ ഓഫ് മിനറലൈസേഷൻ ഓൾ ദിസ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ലെഡ് ടു ദ ഫോർമേഷൻ ഓഫ് സ്പെസിഫിക് എൻവറോൺമെൻറ്റ്സ് ഓൺ ദ എർത്ത് സ്പെസിഫിക് എൻവറോൺമെൻറ്റ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ഡൈവേർജൻറ്റ് പ്ലേറ്റ് മാർജിൻസ് കൺവേർജൻറ്റ് പ്ലേറ്റ് മാർജിൻസ് ദെൻ യു ഹാവ് സബ്ഡക്ഷൻ സോൺസ് ദെൻ യു ഹാവ് സോൺസ് വെയർ പ്ലേറ്റ്സ് ഡൈവേർട്ട് സോൺസ് വെയർ പ്ലേറ്റ്സ് മൂവ് പാസ്റ്റ് ഈച്ച് അതർ ഈച്ച് ഓഫ് ദീസ് ലൊക്കേഷൻസ് ആർ ഐഡിയൽ ലൊക്കേഷൻസ് ഫോർ ദ ഫോർമേഷൻ ഓഫ് മിനറൽ ഡെപ്പോസിറ്റ്സ് and at locations where there are currently there is no plate movements those locations are equally good for mineralization so what we will do today is we will take a quick look at india how is india made up what makes up india then what is the type of mineralization in india and how is it all related to plate tectonics so let's go into the presentation uh it would be approximately let's say 30 minutes long now it's 9:45 30 to 35 minutes long so now it's 9:45 we'll stop by 10:20 or at the most 10:25 okay so if you cannot hear me or if you cannot see the slide professor davis can give me a call on my mobile and i will switch to another net connection okay so metallogeny means formation of economic mineral deposits so a formation of economic mineral deposits is due to evolution of the crust evolution of the crust means evolution of the earth as you know the core of the earth is made up of predominantly iron and nickel so that iron and nickel must have been on the surface and in different parts of the earth but as earth evolved all those heavy metals sank to the core of the earth so that was the beginning of the evolution of the earth and with that evolution of the earth you had different layers of the earth getting formed along with that ore deposits also started forming so when you look at the evolution of the earth in the archean this term you know archean archean is the oldest hadean and archean at that time you cannot say there was actual plate tectonics there was some sort of maybe plate tectonics then later on in the proterozoic some sort of differentiation of the earth into core mantle and crust had already taken place and in the proterozoic plate tectonics started or by the end of the archean plate tectonics started and modern type of plate tectonics started in the phanerozoic most of the third year students will know what phanerozoic is second years and first years also might know what phanerozoic is begins from the cambrian let's say 550 to 650 million years ago modern style of plate tectonics started so from plate tectonics let's take a look at this figure this is a figure in which letsing deposits are shown and the most common letsing deposits are the best developed letsing deposits are in this brown circle this is in rajasthan the aravalli delhi orogenic belt where you find a lot of letsing deposits in places like this rampura gucha savar rajpura diriba then sargipalli andhra pradesh in orissa agnigundala mamandur near salem all these are locations of letsing deposits so for us we will say that rajasthan has got the most letsing deposits of india orissa has letsing deposits 
so there are let's say deposits in different parts of india but for earth doesn't mean that it is looking earth is not looking at these deposits as deposits occurring in a political boundary earth looks at it as occurring in a plate tectonic setting so this location here in rajasthan was previously is some sort of there was some sort of submarine condition or some sort of condition where there was an oceanic margin so this rampura gujja savar all these let's sing deposits have dolomite associated with it it has got many carbonate minerals associated with it so all these carbonates as you know get deposited in an oceanic basin usually in a oceanic basin so definitely the rajasthan let's sing deposits in the aravalli delhi orogenic belt must have been deposited in a in some sort of ocean basin but that ocean basin must have had some sort of contribution from volcanic material also so the possibility is that the let's sing deposits of rajasthan owe their origin due to plate tectonics in which there was a sedimentary component in an ocean basin and some of these deposits also show evidence for a volcanic component when you learn orogenesis and economic geology uh, somewhat deeply then you will know that there are some terms for this for instance the let's sing deposits of rajasthan are said to belong to two separate varieties one is called mississippi valley type of let's sing deposit and the other term for some of these deposits is sedex sedimentary exhalative from the word itself sedimentary means settling from a column of water exhalative means you exhale when you exhale the air that comes out is warm so sedimentary exhalative means sediments plus exhalations from vent from hydrothermal vents or undersea vents so undersea vents plus sediment so sedimentary exhalative so the let's sing deposits of rajasthan belong to the category of two deposits one is mississippi valley type deposits and the second is sedimentary exhalative deposits difference between the two is mississippi valley type of deposits doesn't show doesn't show much evidence for volcanic component so this example why i told you this example is to show you that when you look at mineral deposits don't look at them as occurring in rajasthan occurring in kerala occurring in andhra pradesh or orissa you look at them as occurring in a plate tectonic setting so this part of rajasthan must have been somewhere else india itself must have been somewhere else not where it now exists it must have been below the equator it must have been part of some other continent or some other fragment of the earth and it has undergone plate movements and during that plate movements several collisions must have taken place volcanic eruptions must have taken place whole areas might have been under the ocean and they might have been uplifted due to tectonics and now you see them on the surface of the earth so look at all mineral deposits as a product of plate tectonics then when you study these deposits it will become very very interesting otherwise all these deposits will look like something which is isolated from each other all these deposits are not isolated from each other they are all interrelated and now we talk, talk talked about let's sing deposits 
when you look at the age of these lertzing deposits what you find is that these lertzing deposits are proterozoic in age most of the metallic mineral deposits in india are archean and proterozoic because that was a period of extensive metallization that was a period of extensive metallization because the earth was relatively young and it was also much more active and there was a lot of churning of the interior of the earth so leading to a lot of mineralization taking place and also the formation of the crust happened during the proterozoic archean proterozoic period so you need some sort of crust for the mineral deposits to reside you need a home to stay similarly you need the crust for something to stay so the crust got formed usually crust forms in an episodic manner you have crust forming during the archean then there will be a hiatus during which there is little formation of the crust then later on further crust formation so these episodes of crust formation also coincides with episodes of economic mineral deposit formation so remember the relationship between the age of the earth plate tectonics geological processes related to plate tectonics and ultimately economic mineralization there is one more thing which is related to all this which you study for third year bsc as indian geology indian geology then economic mineral deposits then plate tectonics these three should be studied in combination then it becomes wonderfully clear what is going on none of this is in isolation so all these should be combined so when you look at the lertzing mineralization in rajasthan you will know that it is part of the aravalli delhi orogenic belt in precambrian geology you will learn about this aravalli delhi orogenic belt or the delhi supergroup and things like that the basement of the deposit so relate your studies to plate tectonics and economic mineral deposits also you study about several sequences like kadappa vindhyan kadappa is a, an excellent store of mineral deposits uranium mica all these are found in kadappa but how is it related to plate tectonics that we will see later on it is related to plate tectonics so whatever you study study it in relation to plate tectonics indian geology you relate to plate tectonics indian geology you relate to economic mineral deposits and then study becomes very easy it will be like a jigsaw puzzle coming together and things become pretty clear okay so moving on to the next slide and i'll keep a look look on my time this diagram is a simple diagram it has only got a let's say a y axis y axis is archean time archean time divided into paleo meso and paleo meso and neo proterozoic paleo neo okay so this is singbum craton this is bundelkhan craton western darwar craton eastern darwar craton southern granulite terrain what do you see iron f is iron iron ore group do you know where iron ore group is you know it is in singbum craton so iron formed in the singbum craton in the paleo archean so you, maybe this year or next year you will go and write jam exam or you will write the pondicherry university entrance exam or the banaras hindu university entrance exam or icer entrance exams and you will find a question 
amongst the following which deposit is the oldest and you have choices placer deposits of kerala lertsing deposits of rajasthan uranium mineralization of kadappa iron deposits of singum definitely it is iron deposits of singum which is the oldest and iron deposits of the singum craton are the oldest deposits in india nothing is older than the iron deposits as far as economic mineral deposits are concerned nothing is older than the iron deposits of singum then what would be the youngest deposits in india the youngest deposits would be something which forms today as we are now talking to each other while this seminar is going on deposition is taking place there are uh, there could be many deposits but the most obvious deposit is placer deposits deposits that are taking place in rivers in lakes in backwaters and ultimately in the oceans when the rivers are taking all these black sediments to the ocean and the ocean is winnowing them and putting them back on the beach this process is going on every minute of every day in chavara manavala kurji orissa coast everywhere this place of deposits are getting formed every minute of every day of every week of every month of every year of every decade of every century so if you are asked which is the newest mineral deposit you could easily say it is the place of deposits if you are asked which is the oldest mineral deposits then you could say it is iron another thing that uh, sometimes is asked is place of the, which deposit can you name which forms today and also which has formed in the archean or in the precambrian the answer to that is again placer deposits witwaters rand gold deposit is a archean or precambrian placer deposit whereas you have recent placer deposits also okay so remember these things all these have value to you in the sense that you can use this information for tackling entrance exams and these are fundamental things you should know related to indian geology economic geology and plate tectonics okay so the oldest deposit formed was iron in the iron ore group of singum then if you go up then you see that there are iron formed during several episodes so over several periods iron got formed so simultaneously at the end of the paleozoic you have in the western darwar craton darwar craton you people might be familiar with the darwar craton you have what do you have at the end of the paleo archean 3.2 billion years ago we have the most important gold deposits copper chromite and platinum group metals plus some titanium vanadium and iron deposits so end of the paleo archean was a period of mineralization as you can see from this beginning of paleo archean was a period of mineralization in singum craton end of paleo archean was a period of mineralization in singum craton and western darwar craton then what do you what do you see there is a complete gap here also there is a complete gap so let's say it's a hiatus no mineralization or no mineralization that we can find today so at the end of the archean again a lot of iron started getting formed and also manganese manganese and iron has got and they have some relation in that usually they form in conditions which help each other so wherever you have iron sometimes you find manganese and vice versa so you find manganese in the singum craton along with iron at the end of the archean then you have bundelkhand craton 
which the Creighton you may or may not be familiar with. In the Bundelkhand Creighton, a lot of iron got formed, copper molybdenum mineralization formed, RE mineralization happened. In the Western Darwar Creighton, again, another episode of gold formation, copper, manganese, iron. Eastern Darwar Creighton, again, gold. Southern Granulite Terrain, where we are, south of the Darwar Creighton, gold. And what do you see here? Lead Sink Copper. This Lead Sink Copper is the Mamandur Lead Sink Copper in near Salem. So what do you see? Towards the end of the Archean, a period of mineralization, towards the beginning of Mesoarchean mineralization, towards the beginning of Paleoarchean limited mineralization. What is common in all these? Iron. Iron here, iron here, iron here, iron, iron, iron. So iron is ubiquitously present in most of these mineralization. Then you have a lot of gold also getting formed. Gold here, gold here, gold, gold. Most of the gold got formed during the Archean and the Proterozoic. So most gold got formed during those times. But you have also gold known as Placer Gold, Punnapura, Chaliarpura. In those rivers, you have gold which is derived from rocks which formed during the Archean and Proterozoic. Southern Grand Later in, you have in Nilambur, you have gold. Why not? In some places you have gold. All those gold is derived from hard rocks by weathering, erosion, and transportation in rivers. So the idea that you should get from this slide is mineralization did not happen continuously. Mineralization happened in discrete periods of time starting in the Paleoarchean, as far as India is concerned, this is almost true for the complete Earth. So iron mineralization was the oldest mineralization in India, iron ore group in Singbum Creighton. Then after some time, not some time, after a lot of time, towards the end of the Paleoarchean, Singbum Creighton and Western Darwar Creighton also had mineralization. Again, it was iron and gold with some chromium, copper, etc. At the end of the Archean, there was extensive mineralization. Simbung Creighton, Bundelkhan Creighton, Western Darwar, Eastern Darwar, Southern Grand Lake Terrain. But what you should remember is India was not India in a single block at that time. India is an amalgamation of different blocks. That is why the title of this presentation is Cratons and Mineralization, because India was different parts which came together. So that was Cratons which came together and got welded together along shear zones or mobile belts and formed India. That India is the India which moved through Tethys. Moved through Tethys, scraping up all the sediments in front of India, which was in the Tethys Ocean. Moved through Tethys, scraping up all the sediments and crashed into Eurasia, into the Tibetan area. So it crashed into Eurasia. So that crashing led to the development of the Himalayas. And that crashing led to finding of fossils on top of the Himalayas. Eight or nine kilometers up in the Himalayas, you find marine fossils because of this plate tectonic movement. And from those marine fossils, you have the most some revered, uh, what do you say, you could say ornament, the saligram. 
which is nothing but an ammonite fossil the shell or the inner uh, cavities have been filled with pyrite and because of the movement through the rivers like the gandagi river which originates in nepal gets polished and finally it takes the look of a circle and people call it the sudarshana chakra because mythical it is all mythical but the ammonite shell filled with pyrite and polished is real so how did this happen that's because of plate tectonics so plate tectonics and the movement of the earth and the uplift of the himalayas all helped in feeding myths as well as establishing life on earth in india okay so these are some of the names associated with these deposits so kolar hatti ramagiri in eastern darwar plateau formed at the end of the archean gadag and ajnahalli in the western darwar crater okay why not gold field okay so this is a simplified geological map of india so this is india as we know it but this india is actually a divided india not in <laughs> the literal sense it was a divided india uh, now also you could say india is a divided india but india was a divided india because it was all divided into small parts and that divided india had many many pieces which came together which you already know in a map prepared by geological survey of india which depicts the rock types the map the most dominant color in this is green you know what it is right the dominant color is the union public service commission upsc the geologist exam okay you pass a upsc il interview illumba avade irikkunna professors the favorite question aanu what is the dominant color used in the geological survey of india map appo color orma illengil avaru parnu therum it is green appo pin the next question is what does it represent it represents the deccan traps so i was just incidentally talking about it deccan traps mineralization is very very limited in the deccan traps under the deccan traps it's possible that there is mineralization and deccan traps also owe its origin due to plate tectonic movements over the reunion hotspot which now exists south of india far away from the tip of india so that all that you will study in your plate tectonics class and again another map of india in which you look at india from different view points നമ്മൾ വളർന്നു വന്ന സാഹചര്യം വെച്ച് നമ്മൾ ഓരോ പല കാര്യങ്ങളും നമ്മൾ വളർന്നു വന്ന സാഹചര്യം വെച്ച് നമ്മൾ നോക്കുന്നത് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഇന്ത്യയെ നമുക്ക് പല രീതിയിൽ നോക്കാം ഇന്ത്യൻ ജിയോളജിസ്റ്റ് വിൽ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ഇന്ത്യ ഫ്രം എ പർട്ടിക്കുലർ വ്യൂ പോയിന്റ് പാലിയോളജിസ്റ്റ് വിൽ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഫ്രം അനദർ വ്യൂ പോയിന്റ് സ്ട്രക്ചറൽ ജിയോളജിസ്റ്റ് വിൽ ഹാവ് എ ഡിഫറെന്റ് വ്യൂ എക്കണോമിക് ജിയോളജിസ്റ്റ് വിൽ ഹാവ് എ ടോട്ടലി ഡിഫറെന്റ് വ്യൂ ദിസ് ഇസ് എ വ്യൂ ഇൻ വിച്ച് മോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ബേസിൻസ് ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ആർ ഷോൺ so this is something which we all know offshore kerala kongan app idu edo hindi karan undaakiya map aanu allengi kerala da spelling urikil endittilla so offshore kerala kongan offshore bombay so what you see is india has got a lot of basins in it so basin form cheyanam nundengil there should be some sort of a depression app indian continent the continental fragment of india has got a lot of depressions in it another etum impressive aitulla depression was the kadappa depression kadappa you might have already learned about kadappa super group cr nallamalai kadappa three formations ellam padicha kaanulle appi kadappa for such a huge volume of deposits to get formed in kadappa there must have been some depression or there must have been a basin 
അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ബേസിൻ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ദാറ്റ് ബേസിൻ ഫോം ബിക്കോസ് ദിസ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ദ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ കോണ്ടിനെൻറ്റ് ഹിയർ ആക്ച്വലി ബ്രോക്ക് എവേ ഇവിടെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന കോണ്ടിനെൻ്റലിൻ്റെ പാർട്ട് ബ്രോക്ക് എവേ ആൻഡ് നൗ ദാറ്റ് പാർട്ട് ഈസ് കണക്റ്റഡ് വിത്ത് അൻറ്റാർട്ടിക്ക നേപ്പിയർ കോംപ്ലക്സ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ അൻറ്റാർട്ടിക്കയുടെ ഭാഗമാണ് കടപ്പ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ഈ ബേസിനുള്ള ഈ സ്ഥലം സോ വെൻ ദാറ്റ് പാർട്ട് ബ്രോക്ക് എവേ ഫ്രം ഇന്ത്യ ഓർ ഫ്രം ദിസ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ നാച്ചുറലി ദർ വാസ് എ ബേസിൻ ദാറ്റ് ബേസിൻ ഗോട്ട് ഡെപ്പോസിറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് സെഡിമെൻസ് എവിടെ നിന്ന് വന്ന സെഡിമെൻസ് സെഡിമെൻസ് വെർ ഡിറൈവ് ഫ്രം ധാർവാർ ക്രേറ്റൺ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ സം സെഡിമെൻസ് വെർ ഡിറൈവ് ഫ്രം ദ ഓഷാനിക് സൈഡ് അതുകൊണ്ട് ദർ ആർ എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ഡൈക്സ് ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ഫോൾട്ട് പ്ലെയിൻസ് ഓൾ എൻഡ് ഹിയർ അതൊന്നും കടപ്പ ബേസിനിലോട്ട് കിടക്കില്ല എല്ലാം ഇവിടെ ഒന്ന് ഇങ്ങനെ നീക്കും ബിക്കോസ് അതിൻ്റെ ബാക്കി പാർട്ട് ഈസ് നൗ ഇൻ അൻറ്റാർട്ടിക്ക so you will find that kadappa basin is actually made up of sediments which are derived from the dharwar craton and some of it is derived from the oceanic side so we are, now you can look at kadappa basin from a different perspective kadappa basin is something which is a product of plate tectonics product of breaking up of continents so when kadappa sediments get got deposited then definitely there will be an unconformity karanam sediments got deposited on a platform our platform was archean in age so you have an archean platform on which proterozoic sediments were deposited so there is definitely an unconformity in the kadappa basin so that is why at the margin between the archean and the subsequent sediments there is an unconformity and this unconformity is the location for extensive uranium mineralization in kadappa so the kadappa uranium mineralization like tumalapalli and all these places most of it is related to this unconformity unconformity related uranium deposits you will uh, study that in economic geology where uranium mineral classification unconformity related uranium deposits those are you can find that clearly in kadappa why because kadappa is a basin why did it become a basin because a part of kadappa that part of india broke away and it is now part of antarctica as the napier complex so that gap was filled with sediments so when an oceanic type of basin gets filled with sediments you will find a lot of carbonates as well as normal pelitic sediments so that's why you have a lot of dolomite hosted uranium mineralization in the kadappa basin so now what you see is you cannot have a mineral deposit getting formed without plate tectonics it is essential if the region where kadappa basin now exists had not broken away there would have been no kadappa basin at all and if there was no kadappa basin there would have been no uranium mineralization mica mineralization in the nellore schist belt all these things would not have okay okay so look at this diagram which maybe reminds you of uh, something you have studied in plate tectonics here you see subduction zones you see collision zones and in this diagram gold deposits are shown so you see that in the subduction zone above the subduction zone there would be volcanism and what do you find porphyry gold copper deposits subduction and ongoing volcanism and some of the best porphyry copper gold deposits you find where can you find you can find it in the circumpacific belt of fire 
also you can find it in the andes mountain you will find a lot of porphyry gold deposit then a basin type of deposit carlin type of gold which you will maybe you will learn about it in your masters degree so different plate tectonic settings and those are related to gold deposits orogenic gold deposit where there is a collision and uplift of continents you find orogenic gold orogenic gold means collisional settings and western darwar craton and eastern darwar craton all these gold is orogenic gold deposit carlin type of gold you find in mostly in nevada arizona in usa carlin is a location in usa okay and similar to arkin if when you look at protrozoic also you see that there is a distinct period during which there was extensive mineralization see this at the end of the paleozoic beginning of mesozoic so the meso paleo boundary in the protrozoic was a period of extensive mineralization various types of mineralization where singbum craton central indian craton kadappa basin western india himalayas also okay uh, we, we don't need to look at these names and all it's just the idea and i think the time now is 10:22 maybe we'll go on for a few more minutes maybe up to 10:30 8 more minutes okay so look at this diagram you look at this term nib and sib so often you will find that the india is divided into a northern cratonic block or northern indian block or northern cratonic block ncb and a southern cratonic block so what separates the two it is separated by cit said cit said is the central indian tectonic zone what is north of the central indian tectonic zone northern cratonic block what is within that the main things within that is bundelkhand massif this is the bundelkhand massif aravalli delhi orogenic belt this area aravalli delhi orogenic belt and the bundelkhand massif this forms the northern cratonic belt pidu kaanumbo ningalk immediately you can tell one thing that is the northern cratonic block doesn't have much mineralization avada ulla mineralization is mostly let sink of the aravalli delhi orogenic belt rajasthan let sink deposits then some isolated small gold and uranium deposits and then some copper deposits associated with the bundelkhand massif so northern indian block is relatively less mineralized compared to the southern indian block southern indian block as you know is extensively mineralized darwar craton kolar hatti gold mines kadappa basin extensive uranium mineralization bhima basin uranium mineralization bastar craton gold a lot of different types of mineralization singbum craton is the store house of ore deposits in india the richest ore deposits in india are found in the singbum craton where is singbum craton partly in jharkhand partly in bihar partly in orissa <coughs> and partly in west bengal so it is a kalavara of ore deposits southern part of singbum craton a lot of uh, platinum group elements can be found chromium chromium deposits northern part of singbum craton jadu guda uranium copper what happened at the northern part of singbum 
you have the central indian tectonic zone extensive shearing has taken place which led to development of the copper and uranium so southern cratonic block is this part here so you have the bester craton the eastern and western darwar craton the southern granite terrain and the eastern ghats mobile belt so from an economic geology perspective as well as from the perspective of plate tectonics and structural geology india can be divided into two north of the central indian tectonic zone and south of the central indian tectonic zone north is called northern cratonic block south is called southern cratonic block northern cratonic block has little mineralization but it has extensive lead zinc mineralization southern block cratonic block has got a lot of mineralization so look at the platinum group element mineralization it is all in the southern cratonic block so look at this map <coughs> so central indian tectonic zone goes like this you can see this kadappa basin see this napier complex actually it was here you could there are different theories this is just one theory geology la ningal arinjirikkendathu you cannot call geology an exact science in physics 1 cm is 1 cm in geology 1 cm could be 1.005 it could be 0.995 also there is always a plus and minus in geology so this is one theory that napier complex was here it broke off and the basin became the kadappa basin so this is antarctic shield now rainer complex and the napier complex so india look at india different configurations this is one theory called the im slack india madagascar sri lanka enderby land kalahari desert in the paleo proterozoic so there was no india in the paleo proterozoic meert jg meert of a us university says that this was the continent at that time another is r this is fairly famous jjw rogers r continent called r in the paleo proterozoic the outline is the red is the approximate outline so you can see that in the paleo proterozoic when we talk about all these deposits getting formed india was actually not india it was part of a supercontinent called r which had parts of australia parts of antarctica look at this napier complex parts of antarctica singbum bandar darwar and parts of africa also so when you study indian geology when you study stratigraphy when you study economic geology when you study geotectonics and structural geology remember always that what you are studying is not things in isolation all these are interrelated and always keep in mind that india in the paleo proterozoic or in the archean proterozoic is not the india what you see now no rajasthan no kerala no chatisgarh these were all parts of other super continents okay i think i will stop here because the time is up we'll see, just see some pictures of the kadappa basin as it exists now this is the nellore complex with a lot of mica 
Nallamalai, Karnul Group, Chitravadi Group. So you can see here that these lineaments and these dikes, they do not extend. They just break here. So this is definitely something which is deposited later. <coughs> So look at this this is how it was and now this is part of antarctica and now it's australia which is shown here but now napier complex is part of antarctica okay so we end the presentation here there are a lot of things more to talk but that can wait for another day all of you can email me ask me doubts or if you are interested you could send me messages in whatsapp or whatever or you can ask your professor davis to ask questions to me on your behalf if you are hesitant to ask so thank you very much we'll stop here if we go on and on and on and on this will take the whole day to explain about cratons and economic mineralization in india because it is taught over one year during the master's course okay so thank you very much i will stop here If you have questions, you can ask, or if not just questions, we could, could ask anything. It need not be economic geology questions. It could be anything. Okay. Thank you, sir. That was a profounding lecture. Well, like Sa said, now students, teachers, and all the participants, if you have any questions, please do ask them by unmuting yourself or giving yourself access to the chat box. You know, as I said, uh, usually most of these things get asked in uh, objective type exams and uh, also when you go beyond your master's degree, when you go for interviews and all, it's mostly economic geology and things related to economic geology which gets questioned upon. So it's a good idea to have a uh, thorough knowledge. It's very easy actually, very simple to understand, not at all difficult. So if you can read on this like a novel, like a story, then it becomes extremely simple and you'd be able to answer most of the questions posed by interviewers. Sir, your lecture was very amazing and commendable. For a long time, I think there's a long gap to listen to such a type of, a, type of a talk I just heard now. But uh, I would like to ask one question regarding, we talked about the different uh, six or five, uh, five or six uh, craton in India. Yeah, yes. Yeah, what about the boundary between the craton? Uh, yeah, the boundary between the cratons, like for instance, you have the Darwar craton and you have the Southern Grand Terrain. So there is a distinct boundary between these two terrains. Like you have the Palgat Kaveri shear zone, which is made up of multiple shear zones like the uh, Moyar shear zone, Bhavani shear zone, a lot of shear zones constitute this boundary. So there are several such boundaries, the Central Indian tectonic zone. There is a boundary between the cratons north of it and the south of it. And between all these cratons, between the, uh, let's say, Bastar Craton and the Singbum Craton, also you have shear boundaries. So all, some of these are called mobile belts. The Eastern Ghats is actually a shear boundary. It is a boundary between the Cratons to the west of it and something which is missing to the east of it. Probably that something is now in Australia and in Antarctica. So all these cratonic blocks are separated by shear zones and mobile belts. 
okay sir okay sir but there is another one you know you told about the kadappa basin you know there is some ah. one, one part is drifted to the antarctic area yeah is, is any possibility for in a separate criterion to totally departed or drifted there is uh, always possibilities of uh, parts of cratons parts of cratons getting detached and moving away uh, for instance madagascar seychelles all uh, seychelles and all moved away from india in the recent let's say geologically recent past 90 or 100 million years ago that's very very recent so always there is a possibility that parts of cratons can break away and many of you might have heard of the kurg block that was a small craton which moved and got amalgamated to india near the palgad kaveri shear zone so that such cratons which were not originally part of a larger craton but then subsequently got welded or joined with a older craton is called a exotic craton or you can call it an exotic block so it doesn't mean that india will remain like india forever it can this parts of it can break off that is why you have different configurations for continents breaking off then coming together so that is what plate tectonics is all about you have heard of wilson cycle wilson cycle continents come together continents separate continents break up come together break up come together so that cycle goes on and on that's called the supercontinental cycle okay sir i have another doubt you know in the continental coastal area of the west and east coast normally no. the west coast is more steeper than the east coast mm mm so this is because of the drifting of this uh, what do you call this block uh, the west coast is steeper probably because the, it was recently it was parts of the west coast has faulted and broken off so there was insufficient time for erosion weathering and all these thing, things to flatten the slope there so that is one of the reasons why west coast is still steep as compared to the east coast that is one of the reasons so it is relate west coast is relatively young when you compare it with the east coast that is also the reason for most many of these placer deposits getting formed in the west coast when you compare with the east coast so okay any students can ask any questions for teachers please ha oh, yeah yeah ask because he is an, an eminent professor the eminence eminence has nothing to do with i have read a lot of things that's all talking we came to know that you know you are very eh? so students they very simply sir you can he will explain everything in a simple way in a, in a listening way is very appreciate you know students please ask sir yeah hello. yes uh, okay i have two questions uh, first is uh, why the concentration of zig the uh, lead deposit is only uh, two type of deposit like zigx and uh, this is uh, mississippi and deposit are concentrated in uh, rajasthan only uh, yeah. then uh, another part another question is like uh, can we correlate the uh, east standardic uh, granulate facies uh, granulate terrains with the uh, southern granulate terrain of india then uh, is it possible to get the uh, mineral deposit in there also there means antarctica and, or india antarctica also the uh, okay. southern granulate uh, terrains and uh, antarctic east antarctic granulate terrains okay so i will answer the second question first east antarctica and the southern india was southern indian granite terrain definitely was together that is proved beyond doubt through 
uh, structural geological studies through petrological studies it has been proved completely proved that parts of east antarctica and southern india as well as sri lanka as well as madagascar as well as eastern africa were juxtaposed against each other not now in the gondwana times so there was this concept of east gondwana and west gondwana so what you find is you have this achangovil trio zone or the palgar kaveri trio zone there is a controversy about which one you will find that there are shear zones in madagascar called the bungalowa ranotsara shear zone you have shear zones in east africa called the anect shear zone you have shears within sri lanka between the vani complex and the vijayan complex which are granitic complexes and you have shears in antarctica also which you can fit like a jigsaw puzzle if you fit it together it will be perfect fit so it has been proven and also there are mineral deposits like for instance there is a rare, rare mineral called clinohumite belonging to the humite group of minerals which you find in very very specific environments that particular mineral deposit you can not call it a deposit that particular mineral occurrence has been found only in fragments of continents which were previously together for instance you can find clinohumite deposits along the achangovil shear zone you can find that in the continuation of this shear in madagascar you can find that in the continuation of this shear in sri lanka and also you can find the continuation of this mineralization in antarctica also not just this a lot of other types of mineralization and the phases of metamorphism the pt conditions all match but regarding mineralization in antarctica it is all under the antarctic ice sheet uh, thousands of meters below the ice sheet so it's not possible to extract any of these mineral deposits or even prove that it exists so all these uh theories on mineralization and uh, petrological equivalence is based on a few outcrops that exist or few rock pieces that are obtained from antarctica and coming to your first question regarding lead sink mineralization and mississippi valley type and products only in rajasthan it need not be only in rajasthan it could be anywhere else also but it is preserved there okay first thing that we need is we should have something preserved yengalo yan ms ki padikumbam nammude thrukram ji sir na ningalku ariyallo ingane bulgan akke vechu oru sir undallo avadu vandu class eduthittundu thrukram ji sir is a coordinator for our gis and remote ah okay so ningalku online class ningalku pandu edho lecture okke nadathittundu so thrukram ji sir yengale engundu amba also monitoring the, the our seminar also ഫൈനലിന്റെ <laughs> <laughs> ശ്രീകൃഷ്ണജി സാറിന്റെ സ്റ്റൈൽ ഓഫ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് അമേരിക്ക പഠിച്ച ആളാണ് പുള്ളി മലയാളത്തിലൊന്നും ചോദിക്കൂല വൈ ഇസ് ദിസ് സാൻഡ് ആൻഡ് റാക്ക് ഹിയർ എന്ന് ചോദിച്ചു ഈ കല്ലമണ്ണ് ഇവിടെ കിടക്കുന്നത് എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണെന്ന് ചോദിച്ചു അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഈ സെലവെന്റോളജി പഠിച്ചതൊക്കെ ആലോചിച്ച് അതും ഇതും ഒക്കെ കുറെ ഉത്തരം പറഞ്ഞു കേട്ടു അപ്പൊ എല്ലാം കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ പുള്ളി പറഞ്ഞു ഇല്ല അതൊന്നും അല്ല റീസൺ റീസൺ ഈസ് യു ഫൈൻഡ് ദിസ് ഹിയർ ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഹിയർ അത് അവിടെ നിന്ന് ഇതുവരെ എറോഡ് ചെയ്ത് പോകാത്തത് കൊണ്ടാണ് നിങ്ങൾ ഇത് കാണുന്നത് അതൊരു അതൊരു പോസിബിൾ റിപ്ലൈ ആണ് യു ക്യാൻ ടെൽ ദിസ് ഇൻ എനി ഇന്റർവ്യൂസിൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ആദ്യം പറയാവുന്ന ഒരു ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ആണ് ഇഫ് സംബഡി ആസ് യു വൈ ഈസ് ദിസ് ഡെപ്പോസിറ്റ് ഫൗണ്ട് ഹിയർ എന്ന് ചോദിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഫസ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് ആൻസർ ഇൻ എ ഹ്യൂമറസ് സെൻസ് യു ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫൗണ്ട് ദയർ ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് സ്റ്റിൽ എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ദയർ അവിടെ ഇല്ലായിരുന്നു ഈ കാണില്ലല്ലോ എന്ന ഉത്തരം ഈസ് അക്സെപ്റ്റബിൾ ദൻ യു ഷുഡ് ടെൽ ദ റിയൽ റീസൺ ഓൾസോ അപ്പൊ ഇത് ലെറ്റ്സിങ് മിനറലൈസേഷൻ ഇൻ രാജസ്ഥാൻ യു ഫൈൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് സ്റ്റിൽ എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ദർ വേർ ഐസ് ഇൻ മെനി പ്ലേസസ് ഇറ്റ് മൈറ്റ് ഹാ
been uh, obliterated by later events anyway the aravalli delhi orogenic belt a particular location in protrozoic or value protrozoic times there was a uh, oceanic front there avadu or basin was like the kadappa basin there was a basin in the paleo protrozoic that basin avadu or subduction was further out into the ocean there was a subduction going on or there were hydrothermal vents which was emanating a lot of mineral rich hot fluids these mineral rich hot fluids as you know will be coming out as a plume a plume will then you will have a lot of lead zinc copper molybdenum getting deposited ഇതിൻ്റെ ടെക്നിക്കൽ വശങ്ങളൊന്നും ഞാൻ പറയുന്നില്ല ടെക്നിക്കൽ വശങ്ങൾ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് കൃത്യമായിട്ട് അറിയണം എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ യു ഷുഡ് റീഡ് ലോറൻസ് റോബ് ഇതിൻ്റെ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ഉണ്ട് വെരി എല്ലാ നെറ്റി കയറി വെറുതെ ലോറൻസ് റോബ് എന്ന് അടിച്ച് യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ദ പി ഡി എഫ് അതിൻ്റെ ആദ്യത്തെ രണ്ട് മൂന്ന് ചാപ്റ്റേഴ്സിനകത്ത് യു വിൽ ഫൈൻഡ് വൈ ലെറ്റ് സിങ്ക് മോളിബ്ഡിൻ ആൻഡ് കോപ്പർ പല പല ലെവലിൽ ഡെപ്പോസിറ്റ് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള റീസൺസ് എന്താണെന്ന് അതിനകത്തുണ്ട് സോ യു ക്യാൻ റീഡ് ദാറ്റ് സോ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഒരു എൻവിറോൺമെൻറ്റിൽ നിന്ന് you have lead sink and sediments also getting deposited leading to sedimentary exhalative type of deposits appo sedimentary exhalative deposits korche event inde adutha irikkum form cheyunnathu allathathu ee exhalative nature illathathu will be away from the vent and closer to the beach avade you will find mississippi valley type of deposit which doesn't have much of the hydrothermal vent in the evidence on the ground there so that is why you have this type of deposit in Rajasthan the plate tectonic setting was suitable for it and also somehow it was preserved okay question you are all satisfied okay sir I can clearly visualize the deposition of hmm. that video thank you sir Yes. He is our first batch student now working in uh, Goa University. I think he has completed his uh, PG course. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, okay. Goa University is not the same. Yesterday I completed. Ah, ah. Your exams are over. Yeah, yeah. No, no. The, uh, theory, practical, yeah. dissertation. Yeah, yeah, my dissertation was on the topic of Asman Hills in Eastern Radica. That's why I... <laughs> ah, 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 ah. ഓക്കെ അപ്പൊ എന്ത് കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചു അതിനകത്ത് മോസ്റ്റ്ലി ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ ക്ലേ മിനറൽ ലൈക് സർഫസ് സെഡ്മെന്റ്സ് ഹ്മ് 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 അബണ്ടൻസ് ഓഫ് ലൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ഇൻ ദ ഫിസിക്കൽ റെഡ് ഇവിടെ ആണ് ചെയ്തത് എൻസിഒ ആർ ല് എൻസിപി ആ എൻസിപി ആർ ല് അല്ലേ ഹ്മ് ഹ്മ് ഗുഡ് അപ്പൊ അത് കണ്ടിന്യൂ ചെയ്യാല്ല പിഎച്ച്ഡി യോ പ്രോജക്റ്റ് നോക്ക് യെസ് സർ ഉണ്ട് വളരെ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള കാര്യങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യാം ഇത് ഡ്രൈ സബ്ജക്റ്റ് ആണെന്ന് ചെലപ്പോ തോന്നും പക്ഷെ അങ്ങനെയല്ല ഇത് ഭയങ്കര രസമായിട്ട് ഡിറ്റക്റ്റീവ് സ്റ്റോറി പോലെ പഠിക്കാം പിന്നെ ഇനി ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് എനിക്ക് ജോലിയൊന്നും ഇല്ലാതിരിക്കുകയാണ് എന്ത് വേണമെങ്കിലും ചോദിക്കാം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ജോലി ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ പോവാം I might want you all to know that the feedback form is accessible in the chat box. So if you all fill it up, you will be rewarded with your certificates. Now, I invite beautiful soul from third year geology, Mega CM, to spill her words of gratitude. Mega? Am I audible? Yeah. 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 Good morning everyone respected dignitaries present here faculty members and dear participants i myself mega cm student fifth semester bsc geology on behalf of sahodaya college of advanced studies 
and then we're on 2021. I would like to thank our chief guest, Dr. A.P. Pradeep Kumar, for spending his valuable time for the webinar to help us explore more about the cratonic blocks and economic mineralization in India, where we came to know more about the plate tectonics metallogeny. Our heartfelt thanks for making the session innovative, interesting, and informative. Now, now I would like to thank the opportunity to thank the Vice Principal, Dr. Joy K.L., for his presence and support in the successful conduct of the webinars of Environ 2021. I hereby like to pay our sincere thanks to our HOD, Professor Davis K.J., for the guidance and my gratitude towards our teachers who made this seminar a success. Last but not the least, a great round of applause for all the participants who became the part of this webinar and actively participated in the same with an inquiring mind and made the event successful. Sir, this is Mega. She's got a NIT for BTEC. And she's uh -huh. cancer her seat and joined geology. Uh -huh. Okay, and, then uh, that's very I good. I told her I will make her an MTech in geology in good subject. Can ah, you yeah. please give some advice? Yeah, for, for that. Uh, in which year is she now? First year? It's a final now, final BSc. Uh, <coughs> okay, final BSc just started. Okay, so what she can do is she can already write the gate exam. Probably you know that. In the final year BSc itself, gate exam can be written. Yeah. Uh, so she can start writing, not just she, all of the class can start preparing for gate exams. Even in BSc, they can write gate. Maybe they, they may or may not get a good score. Doesn't matter. So the next gate they can write during MSc first year. So th this will be a practice. So in, in, when they are doing their MSc somewhere, they already know what is gate. So they can write it better. And if again you don't have a good score, then you have a third chance, MSc final year. I know of students who have qualified gate in the BSc third year itself with good marks. Gate is easy to crack in the sense that you don't study for gate like uh, studying for IAS exam. You st pick and choose only. You work out question papers of the last five or seven years. There are gate guides in which last 22 years question papers have been worked out. So if you work out last five years or seven years of questions, then you will be able to crack the ne next gate exam. Then there is a book called Numerical Problems for Gate Geology. That book is very good because one of our students, yeah, anyway, she got in PRL, Physical Research Laboratory, PhD. Now, MSc final year is not in the Gate is something which you can crack if you qualify gate. Advantages of qualifying gate is one is going for MTech or PhD in IITs. With gate, you cannot go to a university usually. You will not get a fellowship in a university. You will have to go to institutes or IITs. Another is for writing ONGC, AMD, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, or for all these, gate score is needed. It is not absolute necessity, but if you have a gate score, you are at an advantage. So that is why gate is extremely important. Not only that, if person are not uh, environmental science are gated them, English are gated them, gate in English, English language gate on the environmental science gate on the uh, pilot subjects loop a gate introduce it on That is because gate is slowly becoming a qualification for entry into government jobs. Uru stage gariyambam, there will be no test other than probably gate. Gate in the score room hoki, recruitment in the So you, she can prepare for gate and also CSIR. 
and if, uh, if people are look, looking for opportunities abroad they can prepare for graduate record exam gre parisha exam ipo best time for going to usa karanam covid age vanna ingane irunna situation ayidund they have uh, simplified their application process ഗേറ്റും അല്ല ഈ ജി ആർ ഇ ഒന്നും ഇല്ലെങ്കിലും അവിടെ അഡ്മിഷൻ കിട്ടുന്ന സാഹചര്യമാണ് ഇപ്പം ഇഫ് യു ഡു എ ഗുഡ് എം എസ് സി ഡിസർട്ടേഷൻ ഇപ്പം നമ്മൾ ആദ്യം ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ചോദിച്ച കക്ഷി ചെയ്തപോലെ നല്ല ഡിസർട്ടേഷൻ നമ്മുടെ യൂണിയൻ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിലിരുന്ന് ചെയ്താലും മതി നല്ല ഡിസർട്ടേഷനൊക്കെ ചെയ്ത് നല്ലോണം ഒക്കെ കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് സെമിനാർസ് ഒക്കെ അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് പിന്നെ എന്താണ് പല പല ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസിലൊക്കെ ഇൻവോൾവ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആളാണ് ഇതിനെല്ലാം മാർക്കുണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ ബി എസ് സി മാർക്ക് മാത്രമല്ല എം എസ് സി മാർക്ക് മാത്രമല്ല ബാക്കി എല്ലാത്തിനൊക്കെ മാർക്ക് കൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യും അതൊക്കെ വെച്ച് അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്താൽ ചിലപ്പം കിട്ടും പലരും അങ്ങനെ പോകുന്നുണ്ട് പോണ്ടിച്ചേരി യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി പഠിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള മലയാളി പെൺകുട്ടികളൊക്കെ പുറത്തു പോയി കാനഡയിലൊക്കെ പോയി പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്യുന്നവരുണ്ട് പിന്നെ ഈ ഇപ്പൊ ഞാൻ പ്രസന്റ് ചെയ്തത് ഐ ഷോ ഓൺലി ട്വന്റി സ്ലൈഡ്സ് അതിനകത്ത് നൂറ് സ്ലൈഡ് ഉണ്ട് നൂറ് സ്ലൈഡ് കാണിക്കാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ചല്ല ഞാൻ വന്നത് പത്ത് പത്തരയ്ക്ക് നിർത്താൻ പറ്റുന്ന അത്രയും സ്ലൈഡ്സ് കാണിക്കാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ചാണ് ഞാൻ വന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ട് ഓൺലി ട്വന്റി സ്ലൈഡ്സ് സോ വാട്ട് ഐ വാണ്ട് ടു ടെൽ ഈസ് ഇതൊരു ഇമൻസ് ഫീൽഡ് ആണ് ഇറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് പോസിബിൾ ടു കവർ ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ്സ് ഇൻ സിംഗിൾ ഗോ ഓൺലി യു ക്യാൻ Look at the tip of the iceberg. Iceberg is not going to be able to see the iceberg. If you go to the iceberg, you can see the iceberg. Otherwise, you can see only the tip. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind information and a simple presentation for our UG students. Yeah. Thank you all. Notable in your hearts. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We always you. keep in touch with you, sir. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, you can. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'm sure that must be this more than just the lecture. It was very valuable. All the words, you know, it was very valuable. And I'm very thankful. We are very thankful to you, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mega. So, dear participants, filled with surprises and excitement, tomorrow is going to be another beautiful day of Enveron 2021. with Dr. John Joseph, consulting geoscientist at Morley, Western Australia, who will be lecturing us on the topic and investigation of hidden water resources using airborne electromagnetics. Till then, adios. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Okay. Thank you to all. Bye. Bye. Okay, sir. Okay. You. Thank you, sir. Okay. Gracias.